Okay, so I am going to attempt to enunciate clearly because all of my microphones have failed. In Thailand, if it can go wrong, it will. Although I suppose if you're watching my channel, you already know that. On a more positive front, I'd like to talk about some success stories uh, which will be exemplary uh, uh, and come from real people, real situations living here in Kolat. And these people are doing very well. They're happy, well-adjusted, probably were happy and well-adjusted before they came here. I'll, I'll using myself as example number six of the six, uh, maybe I might be a bit dubious on that, but uh, everyone else probably was. I, I'm just going to start going by each guy. And you know, so the first fellow, you know, first names only, Leith, uh, he came here a few, just a few years ago and he's a linguistic genius. He, he speaks uh, Thai really well. He's at full conversational level. I'm at like light conversation. He, he really kills it. He does, he's, uh, he's also about 10 years younger than me, uh, which does help. But anyway, so Leith is killing it. Uh, he's been here about three years, a little longer than, just a hair longer than me. And he has a very nice Thai wife. I like her, she's a very nice person. And they uh, each work separately. She runs a uh, successful small business in Kolat. And he is a teacher. So he works, I'm going to say, 30 hours a week, and he stays pretty busy. I would imagine his salary is probably pretty good. I'm not going to ask him what it is, but I know that university salaries uh, for people that have some qualifications and, and speaking Thai near fluently would qualify, you can be pretty good. So he's, he's probably got a nice salary. I bet you he's making at least 1500 to 2500 a month US. Uh, plus his wife pulls in who knows whatever with their business, which is relatively successful. All these guys are people I know and there's gonna be some commonality you're gonna see. But uh, he engages with ties mostly throughout the day. We, I've talked to him dozens and dozens of times and he engages with foreigners just on a rare basis. He doesn't socialize with very many uh, foreign residents. He uh, virtually never, and I'm not saying bars are bad. I, I mean, I, I look forward to going to the monkey bar. We'll talk about that in a minute. But um, he, he rarely goes to a bar or a pub. He rarely has any alcohol. He's a very light drinker. He's kind of a squeaky clean guy. And he's focused. He's, he's focused on his life, his wife. They have a child together. He chose wisely with his wife. I mean, she's younger than he is, uh, but not by a lot and she's attractive, but she's not like a, like a, I'm gonna call it bar girl pretty with the, the bikini playboy bunny figure and the lot of, you know, no plastic surgery. She said, I can tell you no plastic surgery or anything like that. Um, just a nice person. Um, and gee, there you have it. He's always a happy guy. Every time I bump into him somewhere, I don't see him that often because he works and I don't, but uh, every time I do bump into him, which is from time to time around Colat, he's always chipper, has a smile on his face. I ask him, and I'm a pretty sincere guy. I, I, I mean, I'll ask him, hey, how you doing? You doing okay? I mean, I, I think he's being sincere with me. He's, he's truly made himself very happy. Now, hang on. Uh, number two, Kyle. Uh, Kyle lives up to his name. He's a tough guy. Uh, he's the only one of my friends here I wouldn't want a full context bar. I, I don't want a full context bar anybody, but I, I, I don't like my odds uh, with Kyle. Uh, I mean, Kyle would kill me. Uh, he, he's a true tough guy. He's a former, uh, former military and he looks like it. Uh, he's quite a bit younger than me. He's about Fawn's age. I think he's in his late thirties. He, his English is his second language and Thai is his third. He speaks Thai about, about, uh, about where I'm at. Uh, we've had some classes together over at Usani's, uh, school. He's a very serious man. I, I just see him once in a rare while. Uh, I, I, maybe he just doesn't socialize with me, but uh, he, he doesn't socialize a whole lot as far as I can tell. And I think this isn't a, like a negative thing, but he'll kind of push back with Usani in the classes. Like, is this, this, is that, that. He's got like a, there's, there's a firmness to talking with him, if you follow. He, he, he very much exudes that military sort of air. A nice guy, I like him. Uh, but definitely uh, he's, he's that kind of hard line. And so he's very focused. My point of all saying all that is uh, he's very focused. He's done well. He runs a business with his wife. They work together. His wife does most of the day to day. He's sort of, I'm gonna call semi-retired, probably would be a fair statement. He might or might not say that, but I'll say it and I'll stand by it because he's not here to punch me. He's one of the 
very, very few guys I know that have come here and have obviously increased his wealth significantly. That that you just don't see here too often. I, I Maybe in a big tourist area, a guy opens up a popular pub or a, a buy some rental condos or something. I'm sure you can do that. Well, I did see one guy. The guy I bought my, my orange motorcycle from, uh, he appeared to have been increasing his wealth. It, but it's rare. I, most guys come here and we just start spending. You know, and I, my goal is to just basically run my budget to zero every month, which is odd because my whole life has been about saving and building for the future, but when you're 60 and you have health problems, what future are you waiting for, right? So anyway, so that's Kyle. Uh, he seems very contented. Happy for him is just, uh, I don't know if his happy face looks all that different from his disappointed face. I'm not sure, but uh, that's the last Kyle joke I'll make. I, and I gotta like the guy, I'm just having a little fun. Uh, uh, third guy on the list would be not Kevin. Um, I jokingly call him not Kevin, but that's actually his name, obviously. Uh, he's one of my best friends here in Thailand. He's a very, very nice guy, very successful guy. And um, he's retired like me. He's just kind of doing the same thing as me. He's only been here about a year or so. And he's kind of still in the looking for the right lady phase and kind of looking for the right spot to settle down phase. But he's being really smart about it. He's uh, been dating a lot. Fun, fun things. He's, he just likes the dating. She, she doesn't think he's going to settle down. And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably not bet against Fun on that one. I, he's doing nothing wrong. But uh, she, Fun's uh, smirking as you can overhear me making this. He's just looking for the right lady and then looking for a spot to settle down. And he's been dating a lot in Vietnam and looking a lot in Vietnam. He may be jumping ship from Thailand over to Vietnam. He seems to prefer the Vietnamese women so far. Uh, I don't agree with him on that. To me, the Thai women are just so beautiful. And the culture does have its odd quirks and negatives. But to me, they're easy to see. I know them now, and so the double you know, right? And I'm not, you know, just that's a, just a phrase. But so he's basically just in a cautious, retired mode. Again, light drinker, mild mannered, easygoing guy. Uh, doesn't really cause any trouble. Doesn't really attract any trouble. Just an easygoing, happy guy. And he's very happy. He, he's also a musician. And uh, he plays a pretty good guitar, I guess. And he likes going and listening to live bands perform, which I've kind of picked up the habit from him. I do, I've started to enjoy that. That's been kind of a good, uh, a good catch on his part that I've been able to uh, borrow uh, from him. So uh, that would be uh, not Kevin, as we call him. Uh, number four, I never say a name, not even a first name, because he's politely stressed with me. He's extremely private, but he's the retired Swiss gentleman. I will tell you, he's, a, he's, a, uh, he's from the financial industries in Switzerland. So I don't have to really probably tell you that he's, he's, he's very successfully retired. He lives on a little different level than I do uh, and everybody else on this list, as far as I know. And he splits his time between here, uh, oddly Vietnam now, he's been doing that more, and uh, 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 Pattaya. He loves it. Now he does the high class Pattaya. He does the... Uh, the high-end restaurants, and there's very expensive, uh, very high-end dining. Some of these restaurants uh, have some very renowned uh, chefs, and you get into some really high-end cuisine, uh, a little higher end than I go, although I would probably enjoy it, but uh, that that's this fellow here. That's his scene. He was telling me there's three or four, he was saying, kind of really high-end, nice neighborhoods in and around the Pattaya area. And that's when he's down there, that's where he goes, and he always stays at like a top five-star, fancy, whatever, and all the whole, he's, he's red carpet all the way, uh, he can afford it. He's older, too, he's in his 80s, uh, extremely healthy, and quite, and as fun as uh, frequent, and likes to point out, quite handsome. Uh, she, she, uh, she, she says that he, she can see where he had no trouble dating, because he's a wealthy, handsome guy. How about, gee, that's an odd one, women tend to like that, those wealthy, handsome guys. That's my retired Swiss banking friend. He and I, we get together about every two months is our thing. Uh, kind of one of those guys you're sort of proud to call your friend. Uh, he's just, he's a pretty badass kind of guy. And we'll just have one beer. We'll, he likes German food, and I like the, the smoked sausage, bratwurst, that's all great with me. So we'll go to a German restaurant of his choosing. He's older, I let him choose, you know, right? Polite. And then we'll typically have one nice tall beer each and just have a great conversation all night. His, again, his wife, same as the other fellow, I got to look to Kyle's wife in a sec. But his wife, you know, not the typical bar girl type, just more a very nice lady. Uh, quite a bit younger than him, 
but again, not like the, doesn't look like a bar girl or bikini uh, playboy bunny type or anything like, just a nice looking pleasant lady. Uh, the tough guy, Kyle, uh, although he is a handsome guy and a pretty badass guy, uh, his wife's very young and pretty, but he's young. So I think she's 10 years younger than him, it isn't much. Uh, all these guys have chosen a wife wisely. They're all low or no drinkers and they all live a quiet life. So now that's someone that's probably biased. These are people that are similar to me, obviously. So that's why we're friends. But also those are easy pickings, easy choices to make if you want to have less problems here. So you can pick up a theme or not. It's, it, it matters not to me what, what you decide you like or not. And then I've got a new friend, uh, Jay. Very cool guy. Uh, one of those people that just makes you happy to be around. He's just sort of a real optimistic uh, glass half full. Geez, that glass is practically overflowing. It's half full. You know, he's just one of those kind of fun people to hang around. I always ends up lifting. Every time I see the guy, I'm like, lifts my mood. So odd, I make plans to go see him again. This Again, the wife, same thing. Doesn't look like a Playboy bunny or a pinup or something. Just a nice looking, pleasant lady that's, I don't know. Probably 20 years younger than him. She and Fawn get along particularly well, which also makes it really easy. He has a very nice house. He didn't build a big ego house. He built, he custom built a house, a uh, nice house. Fawn and I love it, it's gorgeous. And it's the, literally the exact same size of the smaller house that we have planned. Uh, so I tend to admire that. But when someone picks something you like, you tend to admire it. But I do think it's smart in that he didn't build a five or 10 million bot ego house. I haven't really seen that work out for anybody. I've seen one or two, every, so of the short sampling that I know, one of two things has happened every single time a guy's built a big ego house. They've either gone broke doing it or um, that big money house attracted, not necessarily the, 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 the jideest, the nicest uh, lady uh, for a wife. And I mean, the one guy, geez, we went to his 10 million bot mansion and, and his wife was all over me. I mean, literally, physically all over me. It was embarrassing. And, um, you know, and, and I don't know what to say about that. It just, it was a really weird situation. A hundred percent, she's got a boyfriend or a real husband or whatever when he's not around. And he travels a lot for his work. So I, that guy's got my total pity and sympathy. We're not pals. We just met a couple of times and that was it. Not a lot in common. He's, he's more of a bigger drinker, and, and which is fine, but it just, you end up with not as much in common. I did feel really bad for him. That was, that was an unpleasant experience. Uh, and number six, me. Um, you guys all know my story. I mean, I, 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 all these guys share with me that focus. They've got goals. I mean, Kyle, the tough guy, he's got his focus on, he trains a Muay Thai a lot. He lifts weights a lot. Um, he, 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 he's the, the, does the certain aspects of his business that, that he runs with his wife. All the other guys have their work. They focus on their work. They have a house. They focus on their house. They're dreaming of a better house. They just built their new house. And there's, they all have these things that, that keep them busy that are good, positive, constructive activities. And now for myself, uh, is more a, a lot like with not Kevin, he has his guitar listening to music and he's a big walker. He likes to walk a lot and he does also exercise at the gym and such. And you guys all know my story at the weightlifting and my dream of training Muay Thai, which I, I'm still hoping to do next year. Well, you know, if I can't do it by next year, I'm going to probably just have to admit to myself, I just can't do it. But uh, it's, at this point, it's still a dream and it focuses me, to motivates me to, to train more and more to try and read. I'll have positive things, hobbies, interests, or, the, or working or both uh, to motivate us in a positive direction. The guys that I've seen really do poorly are the opposite of this. And they don't seem to have a lot of activities or a lot of interests. Some of the guys, I, I, I've known some people rather well and we're just not friends anymore. And, and you know, they're, I mean, they were, some, some people were just literally every day at a bar. And, 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 and that's fine, I don't have a problem with that. But if they're busy doing that, then they're not really going to the gym with me, are they? Or we're not really, I really can't, I don't want to go to a bar to have a conversation with somebody. I'm just, and, and sometimes I've, I've, I've met some really nice people in all honesty, but I'd rather meet at a coffee shop. I, I'll meet at a bar sometimes. Like I said, I like going to the monkey bar. For me, perfect is about once every other week. Uh, and I keep thinking in my mind, and I just realized this, how we delude ourselves is pretty entertaining, but I... I kept thinking in my mind, oh, I want to go at night, listen to the band, and kind of like my friend, you know, Kevin, and, and listen to some live music, and the Monkey Bar has live music, I think Fridays and Saturday nights or something like that. And, you know, and then I'll see on Facebook 
pictures they post of the, the night before, and it's crowded. There's, there's 30 people in the background of the photo. The photo's two or three people, but you can see the background, which is what I'm paying attention to. And I can see all those people, connu, uh, busy, a lot of people. And um, uh, yeah, I'm like, it looks loud, it looks crowded, and I don't think I'd like that. So you know what I end up doing? I dream about going there at night, and I, I go there for lunch. I just go for lunch. Where I do like to go at night has been Bat Bistro, number eight, literally the number eight bistro. And they have live music, but at night it's everybody's just seated and it's just it's it's a dinner club like thing. It's it's kinda like it's almost a little bit like the dinner club thing from the movie Goodfellas. It's almost a little bit like that. It, 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 kind of a fair bit. It, it, it's nice, it's classy. It's the monkey bar has shockingly good food. I can't, every time I'm there, it's like, I can't believe how tasty, and I'm picky, I'm a picky eater, and I can't believe how good, their, their pulled pork sandwich is, is about as good as I've had almost anywhere. It's within 10% of the very best I've had in America, and as an American, I love my American barbecue pork uh, and beef, and the dang monkey bars were really close, I'm telling you. And they have a very good hamburger, very good pizza. We went to, uh, well, a friend, his wife, another guy, his wife, successful time in with a, a, a wife who's 27 years younger than him. Gee, it's just like us. Isn't that funny? Uh, consistent theme throughout all my videos. We all went to a place called Jungle Jungle in Colon. I, I, we were all pretty disappointed in the food. I, I, people were saying online on Facebook, oh, it's a great place. Great. Compared to Dea's, compared to the Monkey Bar, food was two levels down at least. Not bad. I'm not saying it's bad food, but if you're a foodie like me, if you don't eat a whole lot like I do, so when I do eat, I would like something nice, and particularly twice a week, I like something nice. Uh, it doesn't quite do it for me. Uh, the next place I got to check out, there was Jungle Jungle, and then ironically, the other place is called Wild Cafe, and that's the last one on my list. I did a little stirring up uh, uh, on Facebook of the expats and Nekon uh Facebook group, the Colat Facebook group for... Uh, foreign residents. And the last name I, of a restaurant I got that I have yet to go to is Wild Cafe. The photos there look really enticing. I, I do have uh, high expectations there. I'm expecting it to be as good as Dea's. We'll find out. So I'm number six and we all have that in common and we're all kind of a similar sort of people. I would consider myself successful. I came here and pardon me in shit shape. I was emotionally beaten down. I was hurting every which way you could be hurting my friend. And I feel like I just uh, kind of crawled on my belly through the desert on a mile of broken glass to get to where I'm at. And Fawn has been incredibly helpful with that. But that's neither here nor there. It's just been this journey of healing, healing, and healing. And I got more to go. Uh, I will be in 10 more days. We go to Bangkok. The Bangkok trip got delayed because you'll see in the bonus footage, I had to spend five days at St. Mary's Hospital. But they did a great job and it was uh, 1500 bucks for the whole thing. So what can you say? But I um, decided to delay my trip to Bangkok to get my third and final opinion on the uh, back surgery. But once that's done, I'm making a decision. I'm going to get that done because i got to go stand up in a wedding in early December, December 1st, and then do a little world traveling with Fawn and then come back and have my Christmas. So anyway, so that's it. You'll see the bonus footage. Uh, there are six success stories for arrogantly including myself. You make your own opinion. That's up to you. But uh, we all... Stay out of trouble, happy, and I see every all six of us advancing our lives forward, going into the future, feeling, looking, looking, doing better, money better, everything better in the future. That's certainly the case for me, I can tell you. But as far as I know, everybody else on that list is doing the same. So productive, productive retirement. Just don't work too hard. Thanks. Hey. Day three this week, and I have at least one more day uh, in the hospital. Lovely shirt. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, where I live, it's hot and dry. And if you're already sick and not feeling all that great and you got other health issues, and then you go and be a dumbass and not drink enough water, your veins will collapse and they have to admit you uh, on an emergency basis. That's exactly what happens. Here's a view from my room. Just uh, absolutely beautiful. Uh, let me if I can do the pointing thing. That's uh, Terminal uh, 21 there. Nice mall. It's my least favorite of the three malls, but they're all good. But, Colot City. It's nice. I, I really like it.
do a little zooming in and get a little pan here. Oh, there's where I'm at, St. Mary's. Uh, I must be up for customer of the year, I got to think. Are you chop kaigatama, eh? No, no delicious. No have tasty. <laughs> I say this all the time, but here's a good example. So I was just at, apparently in my new favorite store, I just, just uh, bought a, a, a hoodie. I can't speak, a hoodie. And um, you know, I told Fawn that uh, you know, the one size seemed all right. And she immediately gets on a video chat and says, I need to see it. And so I put the two sizes on and she goes, no, the other one looks better on you. Okay, fine. I mean, like, like I could care, right? Like who cares? Point being, she cared. And uh, I've mentioned this in a number of videos. Uh, when they take a strong interest in your appearance and making you look good, that's how they're saving face, by you looking good, because they've made a commitment to you um, socially, you know, within their family, friends, whatever. And uh, when they haven't, man, they don't care. And I know plenty of expats here that their Thai wives could not care less what they look like or what they feel like all the time. And that's obviously not good. Ah, getting ready to check out of the hospital five days this week. I like St. Mary's, but I'm definitely uh, ready to get out and take a walk in the sun or something. Uh, why they open the camera? Fawn's packed all the bags, brought a change of clothes for me, set everything up, made a coordinated outfit. Got my shoes, my special socks I wear, all that stuff. You know what I managed? I managed my wallet and this phone that I make the videos with. And I have a little tiny day bag, a little wallet thing hang on this thing here which Fawn also got for me I put my phone stand in there I can put a recharger my earbuds you know just it's just a little if I don't want to bring my backpack I have that it's a great it's a great hospital and it was really reasonable this a lot of tests a lot of treatment I had a lot of problems they found some problems I didn't know I had which I got to address later um, it's gonna cost me 1500 bucks for the whole thing uh, and uh, Fawn's insurance would have covered it, but we had a technical issue with the insurance coverage. But uh, I'm going to do an insurance video at some point uh, soon because uh, Fawn's finally cracked the code for expat insurance, it looks like. And that's a, tall, that's a tall statement, but I think it's true. She did a great job. Bonus hamburger content. Burger King in Thailand, damn good burger. It's not the hamburger you get in the States. If you particularly, and I always order, you pay extra for the uh, Aussie Angus beef. I always I'm gonna pay extra for the good beef. Why wouldn't I if I'm getting my, you know, twice a year hamburger. And, um, but dang, that, that, that Burger King is like, if you just put that with a, like a, uh, an artisan bun and put that on a nice plate, put it at a fancy restaurant, nobody would call you out saying that burger isn't up to top quality. My name is Rob, and thank you for supporting my YouTube channel. I meant every word I just said with respect.